My tram literally takes us from lab bench to bedside. We will show you how we squeeze a lab bench full of electronic equipment into a tiny chip that can improve blood cleaning during dialysis, while also enabling monitoring of heart rhythm, fluid load, and some blood parameters. But first, let's see how kidney failure piles up poisonous toxins in the blood for the story of a patient named Philip. Philip undergoes dialysis three times a week. Why? Because his kidneys are highly damaged. Healthy kidneys remove waste products and excess water from our blood and secrete these in the urine. They also control blood pressure, blood sugar, and the acidity of our body. But what if our kidneys fail, as for Philip, a patient with chronic kidney disease? In this case, the removal of waste products is massively decreased and waste accumulates in the blood. This damages our organs and makes us sick. When kidney function falls below 15%, to stay alive, either transplantation or dialysis is needed. Transplantation is by far the best option, but there's a shortage of donor kidneys. Also, not every patient is suitable for transplantation. Hence, dialysis is the mainstay therapy. So let me explain the differences between healthy kidneys and hemodialysis. Healthy kidneys contain two parts. The upper part is a sieve called the glomerulus. And the lower part is a clever waste removal and recycling unit called the tubulus. Hemodialysis only replaces the sieve part, not this very clever tubulus. And that's a problem for a special type of waste products called protein-bound toxins, or PBUDs. Here's a model of a PBUD. The yellow part that I'm holding is useful blood plasma protein. The two little balls, they are the poisonous toxins. By themselves, they fit through the holes of the sieve. But 95% of the time, they cling to the useful blood proteins and thus cannot pass the sieve. Our kidneys have a special key to loosen the toxins on the blood side and actively push them over to the urine side. But the filter of a dialysis machine cannot do that. Only a small percentage of the PBOT molecules are floating free and can pass the dialysis filter. But most stick to the blood plasma proteins. And so poisonous PBOTs pile up in the body. Thus the problem is, how can we loosen the bond between the useful plasma proteins that we want to keep, and the poisonous PBUDs that we want to get rid of. For the answer, we fly over to Aachen in Germany to introduce a discovery made by Professor Joachim Jankowski, who is the chair of UTOX. He realized that PBUDs are electrostatically clinging to the blood plasma proteins and thus may be shaken by electromagnetic fields, also known as radio waves. Professor Jankowski used the dialysate cleaning fluid circuit of an existing hemodialysis machine and connected it to a normal dialysis filter, which was placed inside an antenna box. While circulating PBUD rich blood plasma through the dialysis filter, he exposed it to radio waves from a strong transmitter at various frequencies. All this at a very high field strength of 100 volts per meter. He then collected samples from the circulating blood serum stream and the dialysate cleaning fluid. And it worked. PBUD concentrations in the blood serum went down, whereas in the dialysate cleaning fluid, they went up. Here we see the results for three notorious PBUDs, vanilla acetic acid, indoxyl sulfate, and chrysyl sulfate. With the EM field switched on, PBUD levels go down and blood cleaning is improved. But it's a bit bulky to put a lab table full of equipment next to your dialysis machine, especially if it produces unwanted radio disturbance around it. We want to shrink dialysis to wearable or even implantable size, and we don't want to disturb any electronic equipment, especially medical equipment. Isn't this contradictory? Well, fortunately, we found a solution called MyTram. MITRAM can be simply clipped onto the blood and dialysate tubing of existing hemodialysis machines to do the magic. Through the plastic tubing wall, 
oscillating electric fields couple into the blood and the dialysate, and both ends meet each other at the dialysis filter membrane. There, the field strength is focused to shake the P-buds loose from the precious blood plasma proteins. The electronics to achieve this are all squeezed onto a tiny chip designed by IMEC and made within their huge clean room in Leuven, Belgium. And while we were at it, we also used a few square millimeters of silicon to add a medical monitor on the same chip, plus a microprocessor with memory and protected wireless communication. So this is the real breakthrough. The result is so small that it fits on my fingertip so that it also forms an add-on building block for wearable or implantable artificial kidneys. This patented chip holds the MyTram system plus a miniature medical monitor with secure Bluetooth wireless connection. On top of helping to shake loose P-Buds, it can also measure heartbeat, body temperature, fluid load, and various blood components. But a chip by itself is not yet a piece of medical equipment. In comes the University of Utrecht and its associated University Medical Center. World-renowned nephrologist Dr. Karen Gerritsen works here on innovative dialysis technologies. Also, famous PBUDS expert Professor Rose Maseril, a prominent member of Utox, runs a toxicology lab that works on devices to replace tubeless function and has all facilities to measure PBUDS. And the Department of Medical Technology and Clinical Physics is fully equipped to develop experimental medical device prototypes, even up to implantable devices like this neurostimulator. They all do this, certified according to the international ISO 13485 quality standard for medical device manufacturing. Because MITRAM technology can be used as an add-on to existing hemodialysis machines, it can quickly reach patients and improve the quality of their kidney replacement therapy. And that is important because present hemodialysis machines do a relatively poor job compared to healthy kidneys. Hemodialysis patients have a limited life expectancy. Within five and a half years, 70% die. Their chance of heart problems is much higher compared to people of the same age not being on dialysis. And for young people, this increased chance of death is even a thousandfold. Any improvement in kidney replacement therapy does is extremely important. Improved clearance of PBUDs is a big step forward because they are known to cause breakdown of muscles, hamper brain function, cause bone problems, lung problems, and accelerated clogging of blood vessels. A backward compatible clip-on MITRAM module can serve the worldwide installed base of hemodialysis machines. The module will be small, relatively cheap, and reusable. But the most exciting opportunities are for wearable and implantable artificial kidneys. These embodiments can fully profit from the very small size of the MITRAM chip, plus the embedded medical monitor, data storage, plus wireless charging and secure communication. The smaller the targeted artificial kidney solution, the more advantages it has from our extremely miniaturized technology. And that's why we want to offer engineers from other Kidney X teams the possibility to evaluate how our MITRAM chip may work together with their innovative wearable or implantable devices. Let's fly over to IMAC US in Florida, where Dr. Römers works with her team of biomedical engineers and chip designers to test new miniaturized technologies in a space environment. Her work is funded by NASA for instance, for a project to test the functionality of a lens-free microscope to study blood and bone cells under weightless conditions. IMAX lens-free microscope is much smaller and weighs less compared to normal microscopes. It is made available to the research community and interested industry partners as an evaluation kit. The chip industry widely uses evaluation kits to let manufacturers test new chip technology before starting up mass production. Likewise, several parties within the US and Europe are interested in MITRAM evaluation kits. Now, let's look at the timeline. In year one, we will build the first clip-on system and optimize all parameters. For year two, 
will test a clip-on system, first on a validated uremic goat model, then on humans. In year three, engineering kits will be made commercially available for parties that want to try MITRAM on traditional hemodialysis machines and for parties working on wearable or even implantable kidneys. We're open to jointly miniaturize such wearable or implantable artificial kidneys. The MITRAM chip goes beyond previous patents on EM field PBUT removal and adds embedded medical monitoring. For commercialization, we'll use branded technology licensing, like how Dolby licenses its sound technologies to manufacturers of TVs, Blu-ray players, and mobile phones. Together, we can do more than alone. It's an honor to be part of the KidneyX competition. And we want to give special thanks to KidneyX, the ASN, the Kidney Health Initiative, and the European Kidney Health Alliance. Let's kick some Peabot. Thank <laughs> you.